Whoa! <laughs> that was close. On my left hand side, we have the Graphite B markers. And on my right hand side, we have the Winsor & Newton Pro and Brush markers. This is gonna be the biggest challenge that these markers have ever faced because these markers are absolutely amazing. So which one is worth it at their price? That's what we're here to find out on this episode of Cheap versus Expensive. Let's go. What's going on YouTube? My name is ADC Art Attack. His name is Bob and welcome back to a brand new episode of Cheap vs Expensive. This is the series where I, ADC Art Attack, take two art supplies in the same category, put them up against each other and see which one is worth it at their price points. Now, as we said in the intro, this is a big video. I am putting my babies up against a real competitor today. Now, these markers right here come in at a price tag of five hundred dollars for a total of, I believe it is 148 pro markers and 72 brush variants. Now that does sound like a lot of money, but when you break it down, these markers come in at a price tag of around $2.50 per marker, give or take a little bit, which actually makes them a very fair price as you have such a wide range of colors and varieties to go for. The only downside being that not all of the colors are available in the brush marker variant, which I believe is superior, but hey, the pro marker isn't too bad. The only difference being that the pro marker uses a bullet nib, not a brush nib. Yeah, and they're going against the Graphite B markers, which are incredible. We used them previously for the first time ever in a previous video, and they were absolutely amazing. They came in at a price tag of $200, but you got a stand with them, plus 96 markers, which is absolutely amazing. It's really fantastic value for money, considering you get a stand, so that's always nice. I can't, however, give you an exact price on these markers, because they do come with a stand, and I haven't been able to find the markers individually just yet. I do believe that they cost around $2 per marker, but I can't confirm that. So this is the video I've been looking forward to the most, because I've been using these markers for nine years years. I absolutely love them. I always preach about them. I say how amazing they are, but it might be their day. We may actually have a true contender here. I'm really looking forward to this video. I hope you are too. With that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so before we jump into using these markers and putting them up against each other, let's take a closer look at each one of these markers and just see what the differences are between the two of them and give you a quick overview of each of the markers. Starting things off with the Pro and Brush markers. Now this is the new design and these are the brush variants. The brush variants, for those who don't know, are, well, they have a brush on the ends. It's actually a super fantastic brush and these are one of, if not the best brush marker tips on the market. On the other end, we have a chisel tip and this is pretty standard across all of the alcohol markers. Most of them, if not all of them, have a chisel tip except for the competition today. Oh, and these are the pro markers. They have a bullet nib. They don't have a brush nib, same ink, everything like that, same price, but the only difference is they have a bullet nib. Next up, we've got the Graphite B markers, and these are big, they are chunky. They have the triangular design, which I really do love, although it makes taking, well, photos difficult. But other than that, it's a really comfortable design. However, they are chunky. They are much thicker than the Pro Mark, or they feel thicker anyway, and they are longer. Actually, they're the same size, what? And they're the same thickness, what? All right, well that's, com I, yeah. On the ends of these alcohol markers, they have fine liners. This is, in it's insane. I've never seen an alcohol marker with a fine liner attached. Now, last video, I didn't really get much of a chance to use it because I just feel it's a bit of a gimmick, but maybe we'll use it in this video. I don't know, we'll see. The other side, we have this amazing brush nib. It is super, super thin. It is actually really incredible. These are truly amazing. And last time I used them, they felt kind of just as good as the Winsor & Newton ones. But with them going head to head today, we're gonna find out which one are better. Now, I'm not gonna be boring you in doing a quick test with each of these markers. I don't think it's necessary. If you are a subscriber to my channel, you can find it all over my channel. I use these markers pretty much every video and these markers we used in one of the previous videos. I don't think it's necessary. We're just gonna throw them into the deep end and put them up against each other. So with that being said, moving on. Hello. So, today's video, we are drawing Venom, one of my favorite anti-villains of all time. He's an absolutely amazing character, and I loved the movie. I don't care what anyone else says, I think it was a great movie. Tom Hardy is one of my favorite actors of all time, so yeah, I'm gonna love the movie. And today's drawing is an original drawing. I'm trying to do something just different, and also at the same time, I need to make something that's symmetrical. So, not everything is gonna be accurate. I am sacrificing the accuracy and the... 
you know, everything being in proportion for the sake of symmetry because today's video is obviously a comparison and we need a symmetrical side to do it. Now, if you are interested in seeing how I do these drawings, I would highly consider subscribing to my second channel, ADC Art Attack 2, where I do my live streams of these drawings. That being said, the drawing is, it's done. So there it is. It looks pretty good, right? I mean, it's Venom, so I think it's, it's a little bit short. I, it looks kind of bulky. I, I don't mind it. It's all right. It's a good thing. It's going to serve for a nice purpose. So that'll be said, let's get started with coloring it because I've been dragging this on too long. Let's go. Okay, so we're going to start things off today by using the Graphit B Graphit Brush Markers. Whatever their name is, I still don't know what their name is, but that's what we're starting with today. And when we used these markers last time, they surprised us all. They were absolutely amazing. They were a treat to use. So I'm expecting those results to carry over here today. And immediately when you start using these things, they feel super high quality. They feel like amazing markers. They really feel like you are getting your money's worth and then some. However, do you see this? I'm getting some intense reflections from this camera angle and it is quite distracting and quite annoying. It does make it very difficult depending on how you sit when you do your artwork. It is a little bit difficult to see what you're doing, especially when using those darker tones. That is something we need to keep an eye on as we go throughout this piece, but right now it is bugging me. Hopefully it's not too much of a problem and hopefully it doesn't, you know, affect the results, but at the moment it's a little bit of a problem. Meh. But how are they? How well do these things blend? Very well, actually. I mean, honestly, it's kind of easy. These things make your life super easy. They blend super well, except for the black. The black I'm having real problems with. I don't know why, it just, it's refusing to blend with anything. So I can't get the black marker to do anything. It's just kind of sat there doing nothing, but everything else is going well. Do you know what? Once every while, a pen comes along that actually teaches me as I go. And just you wait, because very soon, this pen is going to show us a new style, something I've never done before or never been able to do before. And I think you'll like it. Now, there is something I'm doing here that I've, well, never done before. And that is I'm using the blender provided. For those who don't know, every marker set, most marker sets, tend to come with a blender, which is a marker that just doesn't have any pigment. So you can use it for blending basically. And it's usually, in my opinion, a gimmick. It doesn't really serve much of any purpose. However, it is so useful when using these markers, especially for those highlight tones, the bright ones, the edge tones. But anyway, back to that point, what is it that these pens are teaching me? Well, they have a liner on the ends. Rather than having a chisel tip, which most alcohol markers tend to have on the ends, which I usually prefer, they have this. And I mean, it's really coming in handy for most of the minor areas, but there is one thing I've tried to do this time, which I've never done before, and that is stripey lines. Loads of stripey, like stripey lines everywhere. They look great. Seriously, I never thought about using the liner and I actually love it. If you pick up these markers, you're gonna wanna try them but be respectful of them. Work to their strengths, not just to yours. Always respect the tools that you are using and let them sort of guide you in a direction and see what happens. Overall, everything is going really well, but I am having an issue. And the big issue is coming from these small areas such as in the mouth. The bleeding is a problem. Now, single layers isn't too much of an issue, although it does bleed even using the fine liner. It is quite difficult to get those really small areas, which is common with most alcohol markers. However, they are bleeding a little bit. That is quite difficult to control. So you're going to have to work around that and try to figure things out. Well, there you have it. There is the first side done using the Graphit B markers. It came out so good. I am really surprised by these markers. Every time I use them, which is, this is the second time I've used them, and both times I use them, I've been surprised. Seriously, I absolutely love them. I would highly recommend them already. We're not even done with the video yet, but I just absolutely love this. I think it came out fantastic. We're not gonna spend too much time covering this right now because we've gotta move on to doing the Windsor & Newton markers. So yeah, take a quick look at it because it, it's gonna go in a second. It'll reappear again, but it's gonna go now. So look at it, love it, moving on. So the Windsor & Newton Pro and Brush Markers, my babies, the things I love, things I always advertise, I tell everyone you have to get these markers because I just think they're amazing. It is their turn to go up against the 
Well, um, great graph it be markers, which are great. They're really good. Okay, so let's lay out some ground rules here. Firstly, I gotta go for symmetry, so I'm gonna be matching basically the same thing. I'm gonna be doing the same thing that we did on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, for symmetry, for comparison, for you, and for me. Next, I don't have all of these pens, or all of like the pro markers, in the brush variants. They are the same price, they are the same inks, but they just have different nibs. So that's going to put the Winsor & Newton ones at a bit of a disadvantage because I will be using the nibs, the bullet nibs, sometimes. But we should be okay. We'll see how it goes. Now immediately, these do feel much more comfortable. They are softer, they are easy to control, and they blend very well. In fact, the blending, I can already tell you, is feeling superior. The blending itself is easier. The pens are very moist, they're very wet, but they at the same time don't have such a high ink flow that you're going to get too much bleeding. The bleeding is very, very, very manageable with these markers. And that has always been the case when using these markers for comparisons. It is always painfully obvious right off the bat that they are superior. They just feel amazing. However, there are some weaknesses that these pens have against their competition. Now this is where things get serious because I have never had an opportunity to bash these markers against a competitor, but now is the time. Firstly, let me just say the pigmentation of these markers. I personally do not like the way the purples in this set look. Usually when I'm using the Windsor & Newton markers, the pigment is fantastic, but these ones have such a high glow to them. They seem very cartoonish, very highly saturated, very artificial, and I'm not a fan of them. I also went in for the same style that we did using the Graph It B. I'm really having a tough time saying this name. The Graph It B. It's not difficult. I can say it. I've said it. It's done. It's said. Yeah. I went... Wait, what? I tried to go for the same style that we did with the Graph It B markers. I wanted to do the lines, and that was probably a bad idea because we don't have a, well, a fine liner with these. We only have the brush itself, which is usually really good for fine lining. However, it's just way too thick for this. There's not enough control to be able to do those lines, and it looks hideous. The lines are just terrible. Um, obviously, I wish I didn't do it, but for comparisons, I had to. So it does ruin it a little bit, but it's, yeah, it's there. We can look beneath the lines, and it's not bad. Kind of. Now getting into those smaller areas, such as around the mouth, were a lot easier with the Windsor & Newton markers. The brush nibs were a lot easier to control, and of course the ink flows being a little bit slower allowed for less bleeding and it really wasn't too difficult. But I am enjoying using my Windsor & Newton markers. I do enjoy using them. They are a lot of fun to use. They're much smaller than the Graphit B pens, so they feel much more comfortable in your hand. You really don't feel any sort of strain, pressure, or difficulties with them. And I would say that it's a little bit unfair to criticize them too heavily on the pigmentation because I've never used the purples before and I didn't realize just how bright they were. But, you know, usually it's it's not a problem. Usually the other colors are quite not as high contrast, but yeah, whatever. Everyone, there it is. There is our Venom. What do you think about it? Did you like the video? And of course, do you like the results of today's drawing? Now, this is one of those few examples where looking at it straight on, it's quite easy to see a major difference between the two of them. And I, yeah, if you watched the entire video, you know my thoughts about this, but I want to take a quick look at each of these closer, just to kind of go over a few things that perhaps I didn't get time to say and also to summarize. First things first, the Graphic B markers are absolutely fantastic. These are incredible. They're absolutely amazing markers. The pigmentation on them is fan fantastic. I love the layering. I love the blending. The only issues I have with them is the fast ink flow that does cause some bleeding and that can be annoying. But other than that, they're absolutely fantastic. They do have one huge issue. Now I can't confirm this. I just wasn't able to find them, but I don't think you can get them as singles. Now that would be incredibly crazy if you couldn't, but if you cannot get these markers in singles, if you run out of a marker, you need to buy an entire set again. I don't know if this is confirmed, Confirmed. I wasn't able to find them online, so I can't say that's a negative just yet, but if it is, I'm sure someone's going to let me know down below in the comment section. Hopefully it is not, because these are absolutely amazing. Taking a jump over to the Windsor & Newton side. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> look, I love this brand, and I've been using these markers for around nine years now. 
religiously. I kind of preach about these a lot. Now, the other colors in the set are absolutely amazing. This is my first real time using purple to this extent from this set, and I gotta say I don't like it. Perhaps it is because of the comparison with, you know, one side and the other side, but I don't like it. I think it's too bright, it's too vibrant, and it just doesn't appeal to me. Attempting the same style that we did on the Graphic Beast side was probably a foolish act as well. Trying to get those fine stripy lines across those areas that wasn't such a good move, but I had to do it to be fair to both markers and to compare them. I should perhaps have played to their strengths for the comparison. That would have been a smarter move. But yeah, I mean, you can see the comparison underneath as well, the blending. That was the point there. I did try with the blending and... Yeah, overall the markers are fantastic. You know, the Windsor and Newton markers are great markers. They're, in my opinion, the best markers on the market up until now. They have one of the biggest color ranges on the market, so you are able to get any color you need or want. But for the most part, these are professional markers. They're high quality, they're not too expensive. They're pretty amazing. Looking at them side by side, I've got to ask you, which of these markers is your worth it winner? The left hand side, the Graphite Beam markers, coming in at a price tag of $200 for 96 markers plus a display case. Or would you rather go for the Windsor & Newton markers, coming in at $500 for 148 markers plus 72 brush marker variants? I look forward to reading all of your comments down below. Well everyone, there you have it. The video is complete. What did you think about it? And yes, I am sure you are waiting to find out from me which one I think is the daddy. This was a great video. This was a fun experience, but we have to pick a winner. And my personal taste for the winner of today's cheap versus expensive has to go to the cheap side. I think the Graphic B markers are absolutely incredible and they have bested the Windsor Newton markers. Now, as I said during this video, using purples, it wasn't their strength. I don't know what happened with the purples on this set. I've never used them before, well, not to a great extent. I'm really shocked. I'm really appalled, actually. I wasn't happy with them. <sighs> that was... That was sad, really. Windsor Newton, I still love you guys. Don't hate me, please. <laughs> Although, you should have sponsored me. I mean, it's been nine years and I haven't seen a sponsor. That being said, you did send me some free stuff, so thank you. I still love you. <laughs> That's it, I got nothing more to say. This was an absolutely great time. I had a lot of fun doing this video and it is the biggest one I've had to do. It was the most difficult one. Um, yeah, I'm very surprised, I hope you are too. With that being said, my name is ADC Art Attack. His name is Bob, his name is Kiba, and we will see you all again in the next video. Take care guys, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your good boy? Yeah!